Nina, tell us quickly about your work. The kinds of work that I, the kind of work that I do and my colleagues do, it's never single-handed, is to address the question, <clears throat> broadly speaking, what's going on in the brain when a person does or says or reports X, Y, Z? So in the case for the topic of religion, I and my colleagues are specifically interested in religious experience. And that is identified by the people we study as a religious experience, as opposed to a faith experience or a spiritual experience or a whole host of similar descriptors we think might be similar descriptors. Okay? So we ask, we address the question, what's going on in the brain when someone reports being in a religious state? They say, I'm in a religious state. Then we take our fancy tools that we have today called PET scanning or fMRI scanning. Just brave, it, it shows brain activity, changed brain activity patterns when someone is doing or in a particular state. Can you give us a hint as to what you found? Have you seen little pictures of God running around in the brain? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that has a two-pronged answer. If you're begging a two-pronged answer. One is, do we see descriptors of God? The, uh, that, that gets to the question of what are we studying? God doesn't go under the fMRI, and go into an fMRI machine. God doesn't go into a PET scanner. We're studying the human being. So we've got our cameras and all of our things set and focused on a human being. That is the proper s subject of study for functional neuroimaging and neuroscience. So do we see God running around? We're not even looking. That, that's, I don't need. You're Why did you ask that question? It's a stupid question. <laughs> the other is, and now, now I forgot what your other question was because no, the first well, the, one the, was the, so stupid. Well, okay, ahead. I'm proud of the, I'm, I, I nonetheless remain proud of the question and we'll stick to it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what have you seen with the patterns you're finding of the experience okay, so, inside these heads? So what, we, what, what we're seeing again, just briefly, are what we call neocortical areas. This is frontal, part of the frontal cortex, which is on the outer side wrapping of brain, and a little bit more to the back called parietal cortex. And why do we call those cognitive areas or areas involved in higher thinking? Because in other kinds of studies, when we do experiments asking people maybe to do mathematics or do some rational uh, problem solving, those areas light up. Okay, so we see them also being activated when someone says, yes, I'm in a religious state, okay? About the limbic system, the limbic system right now is a bit controversial, who's in and who's out of the limbic system. It's, uh, we, used, we used to have a really tight definition of the limbic system, but it's been uh, a bit of a controversy, but let's stick to the old story. Um, and limbic system is what we believe is evolutionarily uh, early, that meaning that we think that it's involved in more so-called primitive sorts of behavioral responses and lots of other animals. We have something in common with them involving limbic activation, whereas these neocortical areas are evolutionarily late. And in some regards, there's even a temptation to say there are parts of it that might be quintessential human, that there aren't other species that have those parts of brain. Okay. Well, why limbic system in this discussion of religious states or religious experience? Um, before we did our studies, there was a story out on the on the horizon, on the radar screen, studies of patient populations, particularly patient populations, patients who have temporal lobe epilepsy. Temporal lobe on the medial aspect toward, toward your nose of the brain involves, is, is part of the limbic system. So the story was, and it still has a loud voice in some quarters, although it's dying down. Some of these patients, less than 1%, report having intense religious experiences, um, have uh, symptomatology as they feel they're chosen, they're speaking to God, okay? So, and there's something gone wrong in the temporal lobe, which is part of the limbic system in these patients. So the story that has been woven is that the God spot of the brain is the limbic system, these deep structures in the brain. Well, and that the limbic marker hypothesis goes like this. 
no limbic activity, no religious experience, that kind of tight connection. Okay, so well, the story was limbic system should be the thing happening. Well, our data showed no activity, no changed activity in limbic structures. So what was I surprised? I was surprised only for about an eye blink. Why should we expect to see brain areas that are involved in reflex responses with little thought or belief involved? Oops, can't help it. Um, why, should we, why should we expect that? And our subjects didn't describe that as the nature of their experience. Why should we expect that? But rather in the cortex where there's reasoning and human... Where rational reflection and belief plays a central role in the very structure of the experience.